What's up YouTube, Thrift Hunter here with this week's garage sale and estate sale finds. I have a ton of stuff to show this week. Um, it's going to be probably a two part video because I've got at least like a hundred pieces to show. Uh, I spent a ton of money. I went to a lot of estate sales Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, went to garage sales, did um, just all kinds of stuff. Uh, spent more money than I'm used to. Um, I got a lot of listings to do. This video is going to take a long time to produce, so I'm very, very, very busy. Um, just a quick shout out to my new friend Joel. I wanted to say hi. He saw me at the estate sales. I like, I saw you go straight for the jewelry. And I'm like, I think that's Thrift Hunter, so that was pretty funny. Um, of course, I'm always going straight for the jewelry. Um, if you guys ever see me out at estate sales and uh, you know I'm looking all grumpy and angry and whatever because it's super early in the morning and I'm tired, um, feel free to you know say hi to me because promise I'll try and be nice. Um, but anyway, that was a fun week. Found a lot of really nice things, a lot of jewelry, of course. Um, I'm gonna show you guys everything I found. So if you like this video, please leave a thumbs up. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below. Uh, leave a comment if you feel like you saw something cool or you have any kind of new information for me. I'd, I'd love to hear from all of you guys. Um, and let's go ahead and uh, get started with what we found. So the first thing I picked up, this little uh, Royal Copenhagen cat chasing her tail, $8. Uh, pretty cheap price. You can see it's all in nice good condition. It's got all the tags and labels. Also came with a little piece of the uh, original paperwork there. Um, this is about a $35 piece and I think I'll have no problem with the paperwork uh, getting that. Um, also picked up this other uh, Copenhagen type piece, but so this was not Royal Copenhagen, um, but still this is um, B and G. Let me focus that right there. B and G Copenhagen porcelain. It's not quite Royal Copenhagen, not quite the same amount of collectors, but still not too bad of a piece. I paid 16. Um, I probably got it down a little bit from there, but that's about a $35 piece again. Picked up this. It's from Finland. Just a little vase, glass vase. Got it for $5. Um, it's got the original little label on it. It says made in Finland. I've got a pair of candle holders that I'm going to like do a, one lot of this stuff with. This was sold in department stores, I believe. Um, so it's not anything incredibly rare, but still collected. I'm going to put this with some candlestick holders, try and get like 40 bucks, and uh, out the door it goes. So I picked up this little glass piece here. Um, it's, a, it's pretty small. It was only 8 bucks. Uh, usually I like to stay away from the smaller glass because, it, you know, usually the larger pieces bring more money than any of this small stuff. But this one has a nice etched design. It's got a butterfly. It's pretty cool. It's like a little bluish color. Um, and it's signed on the bottom, and this is really why I bought it. So maybe you can see a little bit there. But it says right here, 1934, which makes this pretty old Art Deco style, you know. I don't know who the name is. It's, it's really long. That's the whole signature. But anyway, it looks kind of, you know, like Costa Boda or some kind of... Uh, art glass designer anyway um, I, I'm sure I'll be able to sell it um, if you remember I had a paperweight with a bunch of bubbles in it that had a kind of a similar signature um, and that sold for about 50 bucks so I'm hoping for around that much for this so pretty nice piece went ahead and picked up a few bags of silver plate um, usually you know silver plate's gonna be overpriced at your typical typical estate sale these were five dollars per bag um, and there's, you know, a decent amount of pieces in there, you know, more than 10. So I got it for less than 50 cents a piece, which is pretty important. And secondly, it's got older stuff with better designs. It's in pretty good condition. Um, there's a lot of nice serving pieces here. Um, there's a couple of silver plated tongs, um, a, bunch, a couple of funky, you know, weird pieces. This is what my buyers like to see. They love seeing this old stuff with the nice patterns. Um, the different kind of shapes and stuff because they like to make jewelry out of them. Um, so anytime you find 
silver plate for less than I would say 50 cents a piece if you can get it for a quarter a piece then you're perfect um, on anything but you can get near 50 cents a piece if it's nice stuff um, and I just list it all in one box once I get enough of it um, and also there's always 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 a good good chance that there is some silver in there and uh, that's how this stuff turned out to be there is some silver that came out of this and I'll show you that later um, but remember, just always, you can pick up some silver plate, and I do really well on it every time. My buyers are always super happy because I only put nice stuff in it. Um, so you just, you know, avoid the junk, um, the newer stuff, and, and pick up some of this old silver plate, and you'll do uh, pretty well on it. So check out this um, funky vase that I got. Uh, I, no one bought this. I went to the sale really late, and I just thought it was really cool. It's got, like, copper, brass, and it looks like silver. Uh, it's got green enamel, good color, good height, it's very tall, it's heavy, um, it's solid metal, and uh, the price on it was only 14 bucks, and I couldn't believe that nobody bought it. Um, I don't know anything about this, could not find any information. I'm assuming this is the marking on the back, you can see it's Chinese. I'm guessing. I'm guessing that's the maker's mark. There's nothing on the bottom. But really nice thick enamel, good color. Um, mixed metals. Nice and heavy. I don't know. I don't know what it's worth. I think it's worth at least 35, 40 bucks. I mean, I think I can get that easy, no problem. So hopefully it's worth more because it's just so cool. But. Um, Hopefully I can find out a little bit more about it, but yeah, I picked that up at the estate sale and uh, pretty happy about it. I like the color and everything. Um, so that's going to be it for anything that's not jewelry. Everything else is going to be jewelry, and I've got a lot of it. So let's go ahead and start looking at some jewelry. Okay, first up for the jewelry, picked up a little pearl necklace. It's marked 835 silver, hand knotted. Nice little pearl necklace, that was like a dollar. Let's see, got a whole box of stuff here. Button covers, three dollars. They look silver, pretty nice. Sterling pillbox, five dollars. This one's got the um, separated middle. Let's see if I can show you very quickly maybe not there we go it's got the separated middle which makes it a little bit more collectible I guess it's not just a solid but I mean that's pretty heavy uh, I should bust out the scale show you guys how much everything weighs be right back alright back with the scale so you know for five bucks I, I you know just to show you I kind of feel the stuff in my hand. 10.2 grams, that's worth at least $5 in scrap, if not $6, um, depending on how much silver is right now. But even in scrap, it's worth more than 5 bucks. So I picked up some watches. The watches uh, were, I don't know, a couple bucks a piece. Uh, they're all like busted and broken and stuff, um, but they were pretty cheap, so I got this one is a Kelton 7 Jewel. This one is a Gruen Very Thin. This is a Sterling Silver case. It's pretty old. This is from like the 40s or 30s. Uh, <clears throat> pretty collectible even for parts. I'll put it in a lot. Uh, here's another one. This is another Gruen Very Thin with the black face, which is a little bit more rare. But again, not too expensive of a piece. Here's another one. This is an Elgin. Kind of a rolled gold bezel. Again, nothing too special. Here is this one's a Waltham. Obviously all bu busted and stuff as well. But Pretty cool little watches. I mean, they were super cheap, so I had to pick them up. Okay, I got cufflinks on cufflinks. 
Oh, also a necklace. This was like a dollar. It's just got a sterling silver Coco Pelli pendant. Uh, the chain is not silver. Um, little stick pin with a little opal doublet. Nothing crazy. I think it's just uh, plated. Um, some more stuff. Oh, I mean, swank cufflinks and whatever. These are um, Renoir copper cufflinks. Uh, there's a couple of different ones here. Kind of nice. The best ones in the lot are these ones. They're sterling silver. They're marked um, right here. They say Fenwick Sailors, Fenwick and Sailors Sterling. And these look like, I guess, like gears. Um, they made all kinds of different ones. They made like the ones with cameras. They made um, a bunch of different uh, figural kind of cufflinks. But these just look like some gears to me. The way that they're notched like that. And it's all marked. Pretty cool. So those were the best. The cufflinks were like five bucks for the whole bag, I'm guessing. These are probably worth 25 bucks by themselves. So there's those. Bag of thimbles. Now, a lot of you guys probably don't know thimbles that, that well, but eight bucks for this whole bag of thimbles. And when we look inside of it, there are like five sterling ones. These are all sterling. Uh, this one's probably not, it might be, but let's see. That one's pewter. Like these ones are worth like nothing to me. Um, these, the, this might be silver. Uh, I'm not sure. But these are definitely all sterling. Now, sterling thimbles are really collectible. Uh, some of these go for 30 bucks a piece. Um, seriously. So here's a nice silver one. I mean, the most expensive one I, I would think is probably this one. Um, cause it's the oldest, it's got old markings on it. It's, uh, got this stamp design, but it's a little bit dented. It's probably like, you know, not the best condition, but there's a nice silver one. I mean, even these, these plain ones, um, it's got a nice little design on the border here. And this one's got another nice stamp design. But... Yeah, seriously, some of these bring like 30 bucks a piece. So if you look at that, that's like almost $100 in silver thimbles. Um, you really just wouldn't expect that kind of value out of this stuff. But um, yeah, I mean, if I list them all together, I mean, I'd probably get not 100. I mean, I might get 50 or 60 bucks. But I mean, for eight bucks for the bag and nobody even touched these, you just you just don't expect it really, I guess, out of something that small. But yeah, pretty cool. So some more nice stuff. I think I paid... Uh, around four or five dollars for everything in this little box. Um, this is a little owl pin. It's got a marking right here. It's super tiny and it's really rubbed over. It could be gold filled. It might be gold. I don't know. I have to test it. But I picked that up. Little stick pin. Um, this piece is really nice. It has got no markings on it, and I'm really surprised it's got no markings on it. It looks like. To me, it's either gold filled on sterling, which is probably what it is. I think it's gold filled on sterling. Or it could be Black Hills 10 karat gold, but I doubt it. Um, it's just a little, it feels a little too heavy to be real solid gold. Um, but still, that's probably like a $35 piece. Um, pretty close to it if I list it by itself. Very nice design, just no markings. I'm really surprised. Um, let's see, this is just a mason swank tie clip. And I got this nice set of copper jewelry. Um, I told the lady, I was like, oh, I think it's from like the 50s, 60s, something like that. And she's like, oh no, I think it's from the 40s. And 
it's got this genuine coffer sticker on it and usually you don't see that on er, uh, the early stuff um, and usually it's marked like Renoir usually this would be a Renoir piece and since, since it's not marked Renoir um, I just kind of get the feeling that it's a little bit later than the 40s maybe the late 40s I don't know but that nice necklace this huge copper brooch super sweet and of course a matching pair of earrings so I mean for that copper set I mean I'm uh, easily 40 bucks so that was a nice little pickup there um, there's also these two little mason pins this one is like ultra ultra tiny I'm trying to show you but this one is marked 18 karat gold it doesn't even register on my scale it's probably a 0.3 grams or 0.2 grams something like that but a little 18 karat gold I'll pick it up whenever I find it it's like 25 cents I mean I pick up any piece of gold no matter how small I got that picked up this piece it was just super cheap um, maybe a chance that it was silver uh, I haven't tested it but I don't think it's silver it just I don't know, the more I look at it, it looks like plated and it feels kind of white and stuff, but uh, it could be, I don't know, but I doubt it. That's probably plated, so I picked that up. Here's a cool uh, little, you know, 40s piece. Tested it, it's not, not uh, silver or anything. I think it's just like a rhodium plated type of piece from the 40s. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of tangled, but... Nice piece, glass piece, still worth about 15, 20 bucks probably. Um, Weiss enamel daisy pin, five bucks. Weiss pins are, you know, usually worth about 25 bucks a piece. Uh, the enamel on this is pretty dirty, but it'd probably be cleaned up. Nice piece for five bucks, nice piece of costume. Um, here's this brass chain, whatever little piece silver it's like a thistle you can see nice for a dollar dollar little multi glass bracelet two pocket knives five dollars this one's actually marked sterling um, even though it's gold filled and this one probably is sterling as well but these nice little pen knives for two fifty a piece, no problem. I put those in my like gold filled lots. Uh, I picked up this nice um, spoon, five dollars. It's got that nice enamel see-through stuff. I guess like plique, plique de jour is like usually what that's called. It's eight hundred silver. Um, just nice. Spoon collectors love this enamel stuff, so I picked it up. And this, these two pieces here, I was explaining to uh, my buddy Joel that this stuff looks so unassuming. Um, just, you know, you, you, most people passed it up and a lot of people did. I went to the sale really late. But look at this piece and how nice it is. And it's got a mark on the back right there. I said, do you know what that says? No idea. That right there says Shia Pirelli. And if you remember, I had that necklace from a while ago. That is like the one name you want to look out for on costume jewelry. I mean, if there's anything that's super rare and collectible, like every single piece, no matter what, um, it's her stuff because she designed with Coco Chanel and her stuff is really rare and almost all of its catalog almost all of its in books um, the, the designs are just super iconic so I got this really large um, brooch and a pair of earrings now unfortunately one of the earring backs I don't know if you can see this one is missing the clip. See how this one's got the clip and this one's missing the clip? 
So a little bit of damage, but together, I mean, not the rarest piece in the world because it's got no rhinestones. If it had rhinestones, it would be worth a lot more. But just as a gold tone piece, I mean, still 45, 50, maybe 75 dollars or something that just looks like you know it's only worth six bucks, but it's actually worth um, a decent amount of money. I mean, I think I can get over 50 for it, um, but I might be being a little too optimistic, but really cool. Always look out for stuff with that kind of marking on it.